Hi folks, this is uh, video 182, and it's going to be a continuation of my friend Bob's artwork. This is Bob's Art Part 3. Most of the time Bob sends me uh, two or three steps on his progression to the finished, uh, finished picture. And sometimes, like now, he sends me a picture he's working from. This is a old fisherman's shack in the area where he lives uh, outside of Ocean City. And this old shack is nestled in the middle of a long peninsula. The shack is on uh, poles, and all around the shack is a is a uh, a deck looks like a single story building but it has an attic in it you can tell by the windows in the end and it's uh looks like reeds and stuff on the far side of the peninsula and on this side the water is nice and calm and got a good reflection of the building in the water and a little bit of a semi-cloudy sky well bob's first shot at this looks pretty good he's got the Peninsula roughed in and uh, and the cabin uh, Cabin looks real good um, Along the edge of the peninsula a little white line showing where the water is kind of lapping that abrupt shore And the reflection of the vegetation in the water And then he's shortened the peninsula He couldn't see the end of it in the photograph, but he shortened it and as the water carried out around the end and has created a uh, ocean horizon out there looks pretty nice in this step Bob has brightened the sky a little bit and uh, corresponding reflection in the water and he's roughed in uh, some clouds uh, in the reflection a little more than there were before and this is the finished product Bob smoothed out the sky Smoothed out the water, the reflections. And you, you can see where he carried the uh, ocean horizon across right behind the uh, building. He turned it into a really nice, uh, serene evening looking at the old fisherman's cabin. One of the toughest things to do is uh, draw an expression on a face, whether it be a person or an animal, and getting the the depth of the of the, uh, of the face. Every person or animal I've tried to draw always looked like they end, ended up running into a parked car. <laughs> this is Bob's uh, original sketch of an acetig pony. It happened an island off the Carolinas. In this step, Bob has uh, started to fine-tune the components of the face. The nose, lower jaw, the hair, shadowing in the ears, and particularly uh, the eyes. This pony is uh, standing broadside to the picture but he has his head turned as looking at it would be to the left but you only see the brow of his right eye and all of his left eye and two-thirds of his face and here Bob is uh, putting some highlighted uh, mane on his neck and bring it and brought it up to the top above his between his ears and just above his eyes I guess I should say that this pony is gray in color. That might help a little bit. Bob has darkened the mane to more uh, uh, match the coat of the pony. Still a lot of highlights in it though. It offsets it very nicely. It's done a good job capturing the, the muzzle and the eyes and the ears on standing straight up on, on alert. It looks really good. This is a two-parter. 
Bob has a, uh, I believe it's a turn coming in from the right, and he's just hovering just above a rolling wave uh, that's coming up on a, an already wet shore. The ocean behind the wave is just gray, and the sky is also uh, a little bit lighter gray, but it's like one big mass of uh, gray clouds. In the finished picture, Bob has uh, darkened the uh, gray, gray areas on the wings of the turn. And you can see its beak and you can see its feet now, as well as its reflection on the wet sand. And then the clouds in the background, he's uh, lightened those just a little bit, but they're still, still uh, gray and stormy looking. But he's added a sandpiper to just slightly center left on the on the wet sand uh, just in front of that small rolling wave. Nice touch. Looks good. This one Bob sent me pretty much a one and done. He named it a soft landing. The uh, wet sand and the sky is similar to the last picture. It's a uh, motley gray. And there's skid marks coming from right to left in the sand. And that's because there's a white egret landing. The egret uh, has its wings spread. You know, you should be able to see from the, uh, the left side of the bird coming in from right to left. Uh, Bob's done a nice job with uh, using a little bit of gray to highlight the and define the wings and feathers. Has an orange beak, small black eye, and spindly black legs and feet. And then the feet aren't solidly on the ground yet. He's kind of sliding on in. Folks, this is a photograph of Bob's friend's basset hound named Ben. Ben is a uh, Two-tone brown, uh, the lighter colors on the side of his muzzle, a little bit of his eyebrows, the forward of his shoulders, a little bit on his feet. He has a kind of a little white chin, uh, a white uh, lower uh, collar on his neck, and the center third of his chest is white, going on down to his stomach. Ben is all dressed for the occasion. He has a, a dark blue uh, bow tie with little white dots on it. He's sitting there proud as punch. A good looking dog. Now Bob's first shot here. He has a light gray background. He has a sketch filled in with the uh, dark brown areas and the tan areas and the white areas. And Ben's eyes are just white uh, circles right now. The uh, previous picture I said had a gray background, but may have been light blue. Bob and I discovered uh, if he takes a picture of ambient light, and then the next picture is from interior light, it changes the colors. So all the other pictures of from now on are all light blue backgrounds. So the original one may have been. Uh, light blue as well. In this segment he's defined the colors and he's working on the detail of the face and muzzle. As I said previously that's the, the most difficult part. Bob has created a rough border around uh, the previous step uh, making the uh, background blue that I talked about uh, darker by surrounding it with a lighter blue. The darker blue kind of gives an aurora around Ben. A little bit of a different touch. And of course Ben now has his blue bow tie with the white markings. I took a bit of liberty with PowerPoint and I copy pasted Bent into a PowerPoint slide, and then I cropped away everything except what you see here. 
It just bends head, neck, and slight, slight amount of shoulder. I did that for a reason. In the previous slide, you really can't see the definition Bob put into this. The uh, You can see the hairs on his chin, his eyelashes, the uh, smoothness of his ears, and particularly the eyes. The eyes are the very difficult part, fine-tuned eyes. And uh, that's why I blew this up. I've compared this to the original picture. And Bob has done a wonderful job of capturing it. Really great job. Yeah, this is a one-off. This is something Bob sent me, and I'm not sure when he did this. I asked him what kind of bird it was. He didn't know. <laughs> I don't know either. I couldn't find anything look like it. But it's a little bird, uh, white neck, belly, and under bottom. Tan uh, upper wings, uh, gray wing edges with black tips. Got a dark orange beak, tan head, and uh, large black eye. And little orange feet. And he's kind of walking through some little scrubby little brushes. And the background is a uh, tannish yellow color. I have no idea what kind of bird this is. This is a two-parter. This is Bob's first shot at uh, getting started on this. It's a bird with its wings uh, ex extended and raised up. And it's coming in from the left to the right. And there's a top of a, of a uh, pier post sticking up out of the water. Uh, the water is green and the sky is, above it is blue. It's all roughed in. I did a little checking. This bird is a tern. Seagulls have more rounded wingtips than terns, and being these are pointed, I come to the conclusion that this is a tern. Uh, Bob has defined the uh, uh, weathering of the top of the post. A little brown, a little white. Could actually be a little bit embedded salt, I suppose. And the definition of the wings and the feathers. Has black eye, black beak, and black feet on this little turn. And that's T E R N. Bob had directed me to a YouTube channel he watches, and a the lady there painted a, a scene similar to this. And Bob thought he'd give it a shot. But well, here he has uh, <clears throat> autumn trees. Different oranges and greens and yellows. And uh, there's a red down the far end. And this is uh, setting around a pond. There's uh, green weeds and uh, some tan ones mixed in along the shore. And the reflection of all that color is done very well on the, on the water. And of course the sky is uh, blue with uh, various... Uh, the cirrus clouds in it. The focus in the front of this picture is the three Canadian geese that had just left the pond, one after the other. So the first one that had left is a little bit smaller in the distance, and its wings are at about two-thirds of a stroke upward. <clears throat> the second uh, goose is in, right in front of an orange tree, and these wings are in a downward stroke. The last goose has just left the pond. It still ripples in the water, and water dripping off his rump and his feet, and his wings are fully up, ready to, for a hard downstroke. Bob has added the reflection of the geese on the water as well. Lots of color in this one. Lots of color. Bob told me he had done this one a while ago and set it aside. Uh, the original part here, he has a, a lake in the middle two-thirds of the picture. The far side, there are some semi-submersed uh, mountains. And in the foreground, there's some weeds and seeds and some uh, dark brown shoreline. 
Bob decided to put some couple geese in this picture. Uh, two geese uh, took off, one behind the other. The uh, leading goose uh, heading up from the uh, left to the right uh, is in about a two-thirds downstroke with his wings. The other goose has just left the water and his wings are straight up ready for a full downstroke. Been pretty warm here in the Northeast for the last uh, week or so. Bobby's decided to paint a Christmas scene. So here we have Santa's arm uh, sticking out of the uh, left side of the picture, about the top two thirds of it, up at an angle. See his red sleeve and the uh, kind of popcorn shaped uh, fleece around his cuff. And his white gloved hand is sticking out. A uh, shadow of his uh, of his hand inside the cuff is well done. And pinched between his fingers is a gold string. Suspended from that string, a few inches down, is a snow globe. But uh, the bottom half of it is like a rounded pile of snow, slightly rounded. And the background is three uh, snow-covered trees. Of course, they have no leaves on them. And uh, in the foreground of this snow globe, uh, his first uh, cut at uh, painting a little puppy. On his second cut of this snow globe, uh, he has more defined the puppy. His white chest and, and uh, belly feet and it's black ears uh, up to the center of his head where he has a white stripe. In the background on the lower branch of the center tree there's a little spot there. There'll be a little bird sitting on that branch. In this final rendition the puppy is done it is reminiscent of an English Springer Spaniel like I had years ago. As I said, it has black ears, and the black goes up towards the center of its head where there is a white stripe. And the chest now has uh, black speckles on it. And there is a little red cardinal on that tree branch in the background. Well, Bob's doing a little still life with this one. Um, the first step here, he has a background of uh, of a uh, like a mottled green, light on the bottom, a little darker towards the top. We've got a table with the grain going horizontally, and you can see the upper left corner of the table. On the table in the foreground, he has a bushel basket with vertical staves, and they wouldn't ring around the top. The basket is uh, full of uh, red spheres which are going to be apples and there are two apples on the table a couple inches apart near the corner and he also has one hanging in the air right now. This is a, this, the start of this um, still art. This is the uh, second progress uh, picture he sent me. The uh, apples and the edge of the basket all have uh, a little highlight showing the direction of uh, the, the light. Uh, a little bit of the sky has been uh, made a little darker green and there's a gray shadow and the spindly twigs off a, a branch of the apple tree and that apple that was floating in air is now attached to uh, one of the uh, twigs on that branch. Bob has really brought this to life in the finished product. As I said he had uh, all the apples had a light spot on them showing the direction of the light. Now the apples all have uh, shadows at their base or on their side. 
the background where I said it was a little bit darker he's now put a lot of foliage in there leaves and and the front of the foliage uh, closer to that little uh, branch it's it's darker because it's shaded by the outer branches the uh, little branch he drew has been thickened with uh, some white highlighter and on the end of each of the little twigs is a green leaf on the basket he's enhanced the uh, the grain of the wooden ring going around the top and he's had a, a uh, somewhat square loop handle onto the onto the rim and and deepen the uh, wood grain in the in the staves on the side of the basket he's also in, enhanced the grain on the table and what I he hadn't seen before there were three little chickadees in this picture the closest one is sitting on the left apple on the corner of the table he's looking from uh, he's looking to the right the next closest one is sitting on top of an apple in the basket he's looking to the left and the, sm the farthest one and I'm calling him close medium and far by size is uh, balancing on that apple that's hanging on the tree and I guess you forgot what chickadees look like well they have a real white belly uh, gray and charcoal wings and tail a black collar around her neck under her beak uh, a white sash above that collar to the top of her beak and their head is has a black cap on it that goes down over their eyes to the beak There's three beautiful little birds here the shadowing the light direction the wood grain looks really good This next uh, picture is a, he's just starting out on a, on a drawing that's going to have two deer in it. Basically, he just has the background painted in uh, a green lower third, a light blue middle middle third, and a uh, kind of a dull yellow upper third. And he's hand sketched the the two deer it's going to be a doe and a fawn fawn both of them are broadside uh, facing to the left and the fawn is in the foreground right next to his mother in this second step um, Bob has filled in the, the deer uh, mother's a little darker brown than the fawn uh, he's kind of outlined the ears pretty good, put a little white highlight on the, on the ears and around the eyes. Got the nose uh, captured. And it looks like they're standing in about uh, shoulder high grass or belly high grass. But anyway, look at it. And this finished portrait of the doe and fawn. Bob is. Uh, fine-tune the shadowing around the the head and the ears and in, with a little bit of touch of white here and there he's highlighted the uh, the uh, direction of light in the foreground is a heavy grass that the deer are standing in and then the grass gets lighter and lighter in uh, a couple of layers out past the deer giving a impression of distance looks pretty good and that concludes bob's art part three all the best folks all the best